Uh, good morning, Henry Street. We want to welcome everyone that's with us again this morning. To, the Lord has blessed us to see another uh, Lord's Day, and, and He's blessed us to get through another uh, holiday. And we just pray that He will continue to be with us all. You know, He's kept us safe. Thank you. He has kept us safe through another holiday. Hold on, I got text to a different soldier. Oh, yeah. He wasn't on, brother. Oh. All right, I think we're all right now. We just, we just want to uh, thank each of you who are visiting from other congregations, and we just hope that you'll continue to come and be with us during this pandemic when it's not possible for you to worship at your own congregation. And we just continue to pray for those who are, who are bereaved and those who are sick. We want to keep all of them in mind, especially the Toya family, who, you know, uh, fellowship with us. And we're very sad over the passing of Sister Toya. We certainly want to keep that family in mind. Yes. But uh, we also want to make sure that we do all that we can to, to stay free of the coronavirus ourselves. You know, if you don't have to go out and mingle with people, just don't do it. Right. And we uh, we want to try to get through this thing and and be able to come back together in the, in the building uh, as soon as we possibly can. And in order for us to do that, everybody got to try to be safe. Again, we thank you for being here. You know, the weather's a little frigid this morning, but it's really not too bad. Huh? You know, it's... it's it's not something that we can't stand, so we're just going to make it through. It's not for very long. So we, we're going to be all right this morning. And at this time, we're going to begin by calling a song lead up. Good morning, everyone. Let's notice page 24. <clears throat> I am so glad Jesus lifted me. Everybody have it? Let's sing. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm singing a glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Oh, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I said I'd have me bow, but Jesus lifted me. I'm singing a glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm saved and sanctified. Oh, Jesus lifted me. I'm saved and sanctified. Oh, Jesus lifted me. I'm saved and sanctified, oh, Jesus lifted me. I'm singing a glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm singing a glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. <clears throat> Same open. Same open. I keep falling in love with him. Page 25. Everybody have it? Let's sing. 
I keep falling in love with him over and over, yes, over and over and over again. I keep falling in love, yes, over and over, yes, over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love, yes, over and over. Yes, over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me, oh, yes, over and over. Yes, over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me, oh, yes, over and over. Yes, over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love. Yes, over and over. Yes, over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me, oh, yes, over and over, yes, over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me, oh, yes, over and over, yes, over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love. Yes, over and over. Yes, over and over and over again. The scripture for this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Once again, that is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. May the Lord add a blessing to those who read and obey his word. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us all go to the Lord together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we bow our heads, Lord, and humble our hearts to you, Lord, and looking up to you, knowing you are Alpha and Omega, Lord, is the beginning, and you're also the end. Lord, we realize nothing would live if it weren't for you, Lord, and Everything that liveth, Lord, you supply life and go forward with everything that we stand in need of. Lord, we bow our heads this morning thanking you for Jesus, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart that he uh, gave his life on Calvary's cross for the whole world's sins, Lord, in order that we may be reconciled with the Lord Almighty in the last day, Lord. And Lord, we bow thanking you for the church, Lord, that's uh, vivid out here this morning, Lord, and uh, being in the worship service, Lord, worshiping you in spirit and in truth, Lord, and we pray that uh, we are able to uh, bring more and more and more into the congregation, Lord, and we bow this morning, come praying for the lost, Lord. We pray that the lost will come and ask, what must I do? For his everlasting too late, Lord. And we bow this morning praying uh, on behalf of the coming year, Lord. We ask that uh, you would look upon us, Lord. Let us be able to uh, give the New Year's resolutions that we want to give our heart to you completely, Lord. Let us cling closer and closer and closer unto you, Lord. And 
We also pray that uh, you would just bring a change uh, uh, in this new year, Lord, that's coming up, Lord, and begin it now, Lord, and with this coronavirus, Lord, we pray that you would just bless each and every one to stay safe, Lord, and abide by the CDC uh, uh, directions, Lord. We know that there's a new strand on the rise that's more deadly, Lord, and uh, it's more contagious, Lord, and we pray that we take more and better advice from the CDC, Lord, and just try to distance ourselves through this time, Lord, that the vaccine may be administered unto us, Lord, and we pray that a, a, a rapid deployment of the vaccine will get to the people uh, uh, in a timely manner, Lord, that uh, uh, lives will be saved in that way also, Lord. And we bow this morning praying on behalf of our president this morning, Lord. We ask that you will look into his heart, Lord. Replace darkness for light. Replace uh, 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 bad for good, Lord. Let him uh, have the understanding of what he must do, Lord, to uh, let the people, especially the poor, be attended to, Lord. Uh, uh, just give him the care and the love that he stand in need of, Lord, to have everybody to be safe, Lord, and to do what he can do, Lord, to overcome the difficult situation with uh, a joblessness, Lord, and poverty, Lord, and housing, Lord, and everything that's necessary for us to be able to thrive with in life, Lord, and we pray that uh, you would look upon the sick this morning, Lord. We pray that uh, you would look upon uh, Sister Pass this morning, Lord, who's uh, uh, going for test Tuesday, Lord, and uh, it'll be a couple of days for her results. We pray that she have a good results uh, from her test, Lord, and everything be all right with her, Lord, yes, and well with her. We ask that you would look at... Uh, Edwin uh, uh, Thomas, Lord, and uh, Lorenzo uh, Thomas, Lord, and also Vicky Thomas, Lord, and also uh, Loretta uh, Glover, Lord, and also Calvin Hands, Lord, that you would just bless them individually, Lord. You know the things that they stand in need of, Lord, and the blessings that they stand in need of, Lord. We ask that you would just be with them uh, uh, in their times of need, Lord, and we ask that you will look upon uh, uh, Brother Victor Jemison, Lord. Uh, you know his condition, Lord. You know the blessings that he's standing in need of, Lord. We ask that you will intervene with him, Lord, and continue to bless him. We ask that you will look at the Toya family, Lord, who's still grieving, Lord. And we know grief don't end at the burial, Lord. We ask that we continue to support the family, Lord, uh, and give them all the support and the encouragement that they stand in need of uh, uh, during their loss, Lord. And we ask that you will look at Brother Jeff this morning, Lord. We ask that you will come, uh, build him up and lift him up and let him be able to leave the hospital well, Lord, and uh, just continue to bless him, Lord. And we ask that you will uh, uh, look at uh, Sister Tara, Lord, continue to bless her, Lord, and also uh, Sister Hooks, Lord, continue to build her up to her most wanted help. And Brother Walker and Sister Walker, Lord, we keep them dear in our heart. Just continue to uh, bless them each and every way, Lord. And also Sister Beeson, Lord, and Sister Townsend, Lord, to build them up to their most wanted help, Lord. And we also come praying that uh, uh, as this vaccines uh, progresses, Lord, that we are able to come back into the building and assembly, Lord, uh, at a, uh, the time that uh, we need, Lord, that no hurt, harm, and danger will be upon anyone. We ask that you will look at uh, Brother Mitchell this morning, Lord. We ask that you will look at Sister Mitchell, Lord, and Sister Trinity, Lord. You know the blessings that's there, Lord, that they stand in need of. Bless them to get well, Lord. Bless them to overcome the difficult uh, illnesses that they have, Lord. 
and everything be well with them, Lord. And we also come praying for our minister this morning, Lord, uh, that you would give him ready recollection of the things he studied, Lord, to bring before us, Lord, uh, uh, that your word uh, uh, will go forth, Lord, and ring loud and clear to each and every one on what we must do to be saved and also live the life that you set forth in your will and your way, Lord, for us to live by, Lord. And also, Sister Noah will continue to bless her, Lord, and uh, uh, bless the cow family who's away, uh, uh, Lord, and uh, uh, Orlando, Lord. We ask that you keep them safe, Lord, and bring them back home safely, Lord. And we pray that as we go forth, everything we do and say will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. And when the last day come, Lord, and you open the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord, we pray that he, you will look at each and every one of us and say, well done, that good and faithful service. And this is our petition. We pray that you go with us, be with us, keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. These and other blessings we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's notice page uh, eight, Song of Invitation. Are you washed in the blood? Page eight, Song of Invitation. Are you washed in the blood? The song before the sermon is Restore My Soul. Page 63. Y'all knew it was coming. Y'all knew it was coming. <coughs> okay, everybody have it? Let's sing. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restored. My heart is weary, and please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Stir my desire to work in your form. Light in my heart, dear God, your zeal from cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul or renew my courage Lord it needs restored my cup is empty refill it dear Lord replace all doubts and fear with faith so bold renew my love Rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, we are so grateful to be here in the house of Almighty God. I was thinking to myself as we progress through worship, obviously, that we're thankful that Jesus Christ came, suffered, and died, and rose again for our salvation. I was thinking about the songs, of course, as we are to sing with our understanding, and sometimes we do need to cry out to the Lord and say, restore my soul, because it's easy to get discouraged, especially in this day and age. If you're not a spiritually minded person, you can look to my right and you'll see an abandoned house. If you're not a, a spiritually minded person, you can look ahead where I'm looking right now, see another abandoned house. If you look to your left, you see an abandoned factory. And if you look to your extreme left, you see the city jail. What am I saying here is symbolism of everything that we're going through in the United States today, especially with the threat of January 1st, as you see most of the media reporting that many people are facing eviction 
because of the sagging economy that we have been in today. The factory mm -hmm. abandoned across from us talks about the unemployment that many of us are experiencing on this day. And of course, the jailhouse is representing of mo mo most of the desperate efforts that many people do in order to survive in this day and this age. The only thing I'm glad I can't see is a local hospital because I can truly depress you when you think about everything going on with the coronavirus and then other things that are still going on that just not getting the attention. People are still suffering for cancer and there's not uh, uh, cures for many of the cancers out there, so forth and so on. But one thing I want to show you this morning is quit looking to your right, quit looking forward, quit looking to your left and look up because we still serve the God that said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. We still serve the God that has told us that lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. So thank God this morning that you still have a roof and heat, especially on this frigid day when it's be below freezing. Actually, right now, when we're driving in from Birmingham, it said it was 31 degrees. That's enough for uh, uh, the, the roads to freeze, all those good things, so we're thankful that we still have a roof over our head, clothing on our backs, food on our table, and all that God is giving us, and that we have our freedom too. And that God is most of all walking ahead of us, with us, and behind us. That means he's always with us and never will abandon us. I thank the brothers for their, uh, their, their service in the worship here today. You've done a wonderful job. Please keep up the good work. Um, also, our elders for their continuing shepherding of the flock faithfully that they have over these few years uh, that we've had their leadership. We're thankful for that. And, of course, all the brothers and sisters that work behind the scenes to glorify God here at the Henry Street Church of Christ. Know and behold that first God sees it, and, of course, other people appreciate all that you do. And, of course, we thank God also this morning for those that have been sick but now are out of the hospital are able to be with us here today as well as to join us virtually. And of course, we're praying for our entire brother, brotherhood here in the U.S. as well as abroad. We, we often have uh, folks that join us uh, virtually from Nigeria, India, the Philippines, and other places on this planet. You're just as loved as if you were standing here with us physically uh, right now. And of course, I thank my wife for her continued love and her support. As we get into the Word of God from a literal standpoint on this occasion, I want to tell you ahead of time that though a lot of negative things have been mentioned, you're going to have a whole lot of celebration points here today when you realize what God is communicating to your heart on this grand Sunday morning where we know as a cliche saying goes that God is more than worthy of our praise. So after this message, I believe you'll be praising God even deeper today. You'll be thanking God even deeper today. And you'll be so glad that you are a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. But let's go back to what was written and read that is within our hearing earlier. Let me read it one more time. And I, believe, I thank God for uh, Brother Desmond Mitchell who read this in our hearing. But let me read it one more time out of Hebrews 13, verse number 8. Out of the King James Version that reads, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Again, that's the Hebrew writer writing unto us out of Hebrews 13, verse number 8, out of the King James Version of the Bible. I want to give you the subject this morning, and we'll develop this thought as we go through being the Jesus of yesterday, today, and forever. Now, to describe the Jesus of yesterday, is really beyond our human comprehension, our human understanding. And we'll try the best that we can in words to do justice, but there are some things that we just have to accept by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, as the Word of God says. See, there are things about Jesus that our human minds cannot fully grasp from our own understanding. But we bypassed our lack of understanding by replacing it with a faith and a trust in the testimony of the Word of God. Instead, I hope I have somebody in here, an old soldier that can tell me today that even though I don't understand everything that's in God's Word, I believe it, I obey it, 
and I spread it, even if it's beyond part of, of my comprehension. And what I'm getting at is John chapter number one, probably the most controversial passage of scripture in the Bible being John one, verse one to verse three, and verse number 14 that details the divinity of Jesus Christ. In other words, him being God and becoming flesh for our salvation. You see, the word of God begins by calling Jesus the word that existed before the creation of the world. John chapter one, verse one to verse number three makes this abundantly clear when it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So although we are calling him Jesus our savior, the Jesus of yesterday. He actually existed before any days were ever on anybody's calendar. In other words, he existed before the beginning of time, space, and matter. In fact, Jesus is the creator of the days, the creator of our solar system, the creator of the animals and plants that share this earth with us. And even all mankind sees their origin with Jesus Christ, the creator of all humankind, beginning with our forefathers and foremother, Adam and Eve. So yes, Jesus is divine, and he is called by God in the holy word of itself. So I don't care who argues with the divinity of Jesus Christ. If my God says it, and he decided to write it down, I'm just naive enough to believe it. Oh, amen, somebody help you understand what I'm saying here and the sarcasm I'm using here. Knowing truly that Jesus' origins is from heaven. He is God, and of course, he became flesh for our salvation. Even more, the Jesus of yesterday clothed himself in flesh to become human like you and I. That's where God starts articulating that, making that known to us, revealing it to us in, in John chapter 1, verse number 14, where the word we're talking about Jesus himself the Bible says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. The Bible shows us that while Jesus was still in his spiritually divine form and before coming to the earth in the flesh, he looked down on the state of mankind. He looked down upon us here on earth and he saw that we were languishing and when we're losing the battle against sin, he saw that we were not winning against the wiles of Satan. And he saw that we were constantly falling and that we were separating ourselves from God. And worst of all, he saw that at the end of the day, without him coming to save us, that heaven would never be any of our home, including the man that's speaking to you right now. So Jesus looked at us, but he looked down upon us and he didn't turn his head. He didn't turn a deaf ear. He didn't close his eyes to the status of mankind, knowing that we needed some help down here. We needed somebody to give us an opportunity to make heaven as our home. So out of his big heart of compassion, you'll find out later in the Bible that Jesus had a conversation with the Father God in heaven. And he demonstrated how what man was doing was not enough to save him. In other words, he was looking at the, the, what we call the economy of the Old Testament, where man was giving thousands, if not millions of animals for the sins of mankind and found out that the blood of these beasts, the blood of these animals was not enough to pay the price for all of our sins. So instead of Jesus saying, Just let's let everything go and forget about them, he said, Lord, send me. Let me be the sacrifice for their sins. Let me be the one that will come down and put and have nails in his hands and his feet and say those final words before giving up the ghost. It is finished so that they, when they come down to the judgment day, will hear the sweet words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, folks, I know that Jesus loves me. I know that Jesus loves you. I know Jesus loves the world because he said that greater love have no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friends. Folks, he laid down his life. He volunteered to die for you and I. Let me show you what was said about this situation when Jesus decided to clothe himself, clothe himself that is, with humanity 
and volunteer to die for you and die. The Hebrew writer articulates this. He makes it known to us in Hebrews 10, verse 5 to verse number 7, where he says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me, prepared me, that is, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, oh, somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord, for saying what you're about to say. He said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the books that is written of me to do thy will, oh, God. That means to die on the cruel cross of Calvary for you and I. So, yes, the Father God and Jesus were both in agreement that instead of sending us to eternal punishment that we deserve, Jesus will be sent to the cross to make peace for our sins. You see, the Jesus of yesterday knew completely well what he was volunteering to do. You see, the Jesus of yesterday, he knew that men would disrespect him by belittling his name, spitting on him, and lying about him. The Jesus of yesterday knew that men would plot to kill him. The Jesus of yesterday knew that one of his own would sell him out for 30 pieces of silver. The Jesus of yesterday knew that men would savagely punch him, slap him, and whip him. And the Jesus of yesterday knew that this would result in him being placed on the cruel cross of Calvary with nails in his hands and feet for hours upon him, or upon end, that is. But folks, even though he knew all this, he did it anyway. Somebody ought to be saying, thank God he did it anyway. With our full knowledge of what he was going through, he did it anyway. You see, he clothed himself with flesh in order to get these things done because he knew it was the way for salvation for all of us. He clothed himself with flesh because he knew it was the ultimate expression of love. And he clothed himself with flesh because he knew it was the Father's way to come to peace again with us at the final day in which we're going to see him face to face and walk down those streets of gold. Now moving forward. Let's make sure we're convicted in the heart regarding the Jesus of today being no different than the Jesus of yesterday. You see, the Jesus of today is alive. Anybody believe that Jesus is alive here today? It is as the angel said at the empty tomb in Luke 24, verse 5 and verse number 6. It says, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. You see, the Jesus of today will never abandon us because he said in Matthew 28, verse number 20, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the Jesus of today supplies wisdom to us during our temptations to overcome them. And this is why Hebrews 4, verse 14 and 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Somebody ought to be glad that Jesus never sinned. And because of this, in him overcoming sin, he can help us overcome ourselves. That's why verse number 16 is your celebration point here today, where it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne, to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need and the jesus of today intervenes from heaven to make sure that we are all victorious no matter what our struggle may currently be because we stand on the holy spirit filled uh, words inspiring words of paul who said in philippians 4 verse 13 folks that we've been standing on all of our christian life that i can do all things through christ that does what church that strengthens me all hope you believe that because i sure have seen it in my own life. And I'm sure you have. You've been in, a, in the life of a, Christ, a Christian all this time. Now, lastly, the Jesus of forever is the one we strive to live with forever. You see, the Jesus of forever has already obtained, that is, he has received immortality that we are striving to receive ourselves. I don't know about you, but I want to go to somebody that can walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Oh, amen, somebody. You see, my Jesus is, is supplying eternal life to all of us. That means he had to get it for himself. Amen, somebody. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be able to go to a bank and they don't have no money and say they can give me money because that means that bank is worthless. 
But when a bank is loaded and has all type of money, then I know it can loan me the money that I'm going to get from them. So the same thing with Jesus Christ. Since he has eternal life right now, since he's alive, I know that when all is said and done, that great resurrection day is going to come. Not only I, but you that are faithful until the end, you're going to see heaven, eternal life as your home. You see, Paul tells us this plainly about the immortality that Jesus has in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, which describes Jesus in the following words. It says about Jesus, who only hath immortality, that means the only one immortal right now, dwelling in a light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Remember that Jesus of forever has gone on to eternal glory ahead of us to prepare our place for us to meet him on the other side. As we talk about every week, again, another celebration point for you out of John 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, where Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Thank God somebody, just like a race, is out there. Thank God Jesus is our pace car. Amen, somebody. And all we got to do is follow him to that victory lap. You see, folks, remember that Jesus will forever is coming back to take us to glory because Paul gave us the comforting words of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and verse number 17. That's talking about the future for all of us where we're going to see Jesus on that great glorious second coming day to come. Where well, the Bible says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I don't know about you. I don't care if I'm dead when he come back. I don't care if I'm alive. I'm just caring that I see, when he, see him in truth when he comes back and he's pleased with me. He says in verse number 17, because it won't make any difference then. He says, then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, somebody ought to be saying, thank God for the Jesus of yesterday, today, and forever. You see, the Jesus of forever is a judge of all mankind and has already written our names in the book of life so that heaven can be our home in Revelation 20, verse 11 to verse number 15. You see, but the difference here is as we conclude, the difference between us and Jesus is that we are not the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody ought to be saying, thank God I'm not the person of my yesterday. I'm going to show you why. This is because we want to change our yesterday so that our today and forever can be completely different and result in the joys of heaven for us in the end. We can only do that becoming a Christian child of God here today. Today will change the way that God sees your yesterday to make today and forever your day of salvation if you give yourself over to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God is willing to forget your yesterday. Oh, somebody ought to be saying, I'm so glad that God is willing to forget my yesterday because my yesterday will affect my future. Amen, somebody. God is willing to forget your yesterday to make you his forgiven and saved child today. Won't you come before it's everlastingly too late for you? Well, you should be asking the question right now. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you have to understand that your yesterday is still with you today. What I mean by that is that the Bible talks about our yesterday. In Romans 3, 23, in Romans 6, verse 23, where the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. You ought to be saying, I don't want my yesterday to be my day and my today, that is, and my forever. Oh, amen, somebody. If a saint is in here that's saved today, you ought to be saying, thank you, Lord, that my today is not my yesterday. Because my today and my forever, when you're in Christ, when you're a Christian, God has forgotten your yesterday. It's called washing away your sins in the blood of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, verse number 5. And when your sins are washed away, that is forgiven of you, that's when salvation has become the status of your life. You have to understand the Bible says that Jesus says in Revelation 1, verse number 5, that he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end 
who's washed us from our sins in his very own blood. That's why the Bible says that the gift of eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. Of course, we have to understand that the gift of eternal life, it comes through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There's no other Savior that God is going to send down here for our salvation. That's why Jesus can say in John chapter 14, verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, have you seen what we talked about here today? Jesus has cleared the way for you to make heaven your home. All you got to do is become his disciple, his follower here today, also known as a child of God, also known as a Christian for heaven and salvation and eternal life to be yours. What do you got to do in order to get that? Where well, it starts off in Romans 10, verse 17, the plan of salvation. Where well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Guess what? You have already heard the word of God. You've already heard what has already been said in John 3, verse number 16. Where well, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You have heard right now that Jesus is divine. You have heard how Jesus started off in heaven. You have heard how Jesus volunteered to become a human being clothed in flesh to take away the guilt of our sins as he was punished on the cross of Calvary instead of us going unto eternal damnation, eternal punishment instead. He is the Lord and its Savior. He is the Son of God. So for you to be saved, you got to believe those facts right here Amen. and right now. And after you do that, you'll have no problem with the rest of the plan of salvation. Because if you believe that he's a son of God, meaning also the Lord and Savior of your life, you'll do exactly what he says in order to be saved. He tells us in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse number 5, his, his preacher, the apostle Peter, said the same thing in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, that we all must repent of our sins. That's another way of saying that we're willing since we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, our Lord and Savior, to turn our back on the sinful ways that we have lived all of our days and instead to turn to living a committed lifestyle of righteousness in the sight of God. That's all repentance means, to turn away from sin, to turn away from your yesterday and make your today a day of living righteousness instead in the sight of Almighty God. The fourth part of the plan of salvation is that you must show that you are not ashamed of the faith that you have come to in your own heart, that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and verse number 10, if we're willing to confess this about Jesus, then God is willing to save us as well. Because the Bible says that with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You'll see an example of that in Acts 8, verse 37, where the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you'll have to go down the fifth part of the plan of salvation in the watery grave of baptism. You have to understand that Jesus commanded that we must be baptized in water for us to be saved. See, I'm not ashamed to say I've been baptized because I know exactly what baptism in water does. In other words, I know how God reacts to us when we obey his commandment where Jesus said in Mark 16, verse number 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I know that from obeying the word of God and going down in that water that I arose a saved child of God at that time. I know that back in 1986 when I did it that my sins were washed away. In other words, that's when God forgave me of my yesterday so that my today and forever could be forgiven in God's sight. Because the Bible says... In Acts 22, verse number 16, Why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. I know that I have become a child of God after I got out of the watery grave of baptism because the Bible tells us in Galatians 3, verse number 27, that those who have been baptized have been baptized into Christ. In other words, that's when I became one with him. That's when I became a part of the a family of God, just like he's a son. I became a son on that great day that I emerged from the watery grave of baptism in obedience to the commandment of Jesus Christ. F folks don't believe in baptism, but I believe in the Bible. If the Bible says baptism is necessary, then I'm not going to argue with it. Because I know that it also says 
in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, that baptism does save us. It's not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. So in other words, when I got out of that watery grave of baptism, I also got out of that watery grave feeling relieved, knowing that God has forgiven me of all my sins, and now I don't have to feel guilty about anything else. Folks, I'm not glorifying myself right now. I'm glorifying God, and I'm glorifying what you may do. If you decide to come out of your vehicle, come out of the parking lot, and come down here right now, as I'm going to ask you the simple question, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God where you can give your confession right there on the spot? And right behind me, just a few steps, is that watery grave of baptism, that pool that we're going to submerge you in, bring you out immediately, but God is going to arise you from the spiritually dead and make you alive unto him, and you'll have salvation, forgiveness of your sins, and eternal life if you stay faithful to what you started. That's the part of part, part of the plan of salvation addressed to me and every Christian that ever lived where Jesus said in Revelation 2 verse number 10 he said be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. So to simplify it all if you want salvation if you want the forgiveness of your sins if you want to become a Christian child of God all you got to do is hear the word of God which you've done believe in this testimony that Jesus Christ is the son of God your Lord and Savior Repent of your sins, confess him as the son of God, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your, of your sins. And you're going to be a Christian right there now. And you're going to be able to celebrate when you leave this assembly here today. But if you're a child of God, transitioning thoughts here. Don't, and if you are falling short, don't give up. Don't give in. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and fight again. What I mean by that is that God says if you're a Christian have done something wrong, in order to regain his forgiveness is in Acts 8.22 and 1 John 1, 7 and verse number 10 that you got to repent, confess your fault to him and ask him to forgive you. And he's going to forgive you just as if nothing has happened and you'll be back on Salvation Road if you want to call it that uh, right then and there. So we just take this moment as I call it to pause. We sing a song of invitation that to give you an opportunity to come down here, make your confession and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and salvation of your soul if you so desire here today. Won't you come as together we stand and sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you come? Page 8. <clears throat> Page eight, are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace? This I are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, or they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let the church say amen once again. Thank you again, as always, for listening to the word of Almighty God. Receiving it, and of course, it's been, hopefully that is, it's been embedded in our hearts so much that we're able to share it with others. Thank God in your heart for a moment, for again, for him sending a Jesus of yesterday, today, and forever into all of our lives. And otherwise, we wouldn't have no opportunity to be saved. I'm going to go ahead and articulate, that is, to read the uh, formal prayer request that we have received. And, uh, of course, we ask, as always, you take these names home with you. Uh, and, of course, participate in the prayer right now for 
the uh, well-being of everybody that's mentioned. Uh, the first name, of course, on the list is Roderick Pearson, away from us in Atlanta. Let's pray for him. Uh, our precious sister in Chiquita Duckett. Uh, Diane Terrell for her doctor's appointment that's coming up. Uh, Veronica Heath, our beloved sister, for forgiveness of sin and for her health. Uh, sister Ida Sawyer. Uh, Marie Terrell. Uh, Trusilla Fleming. Uh, Brother Henry Jelks. Uh, Diana Hogs. Uh, Pearson, Valentine, and Kyle families that are traveling at this time. Uh, uh, Jordan as well that is traveling. Uh, Nancy Mitchell for healing from surgery. Cheryl Coleman and family, our precious sister. Uh, Mary Hooks from, for relief of pain. Uh, for our young sister, uh, Zariana McRae for oral surgery she's going to be having tomorrow. Our beloved sister and Phyllis Cole recovering from surgery. Uh, Aaron Heath and family. Dontel Sawyer, excuse me, Dontel Turner for her health, as well as Shirley Jackson. Let's continue to pray for all those names that are mentioned. And uh, again, I encourage you to pray along with me, and then we'll turn things over to the brothers to complete the service. Let's take a moment to pray. Dear and precious Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you for Jesus who suffered, died, and rose again, that we may have a chance at eternal life. Father God, our country is struggling. And not only us, but many people across the globe are struggling. Um, of course, we have homelessness in the midst of this city. Uh, we have people that are facing eviction uh, that has been held off by the government for a while. But uh, the government has a stalemate right now as far as giving relief to the American people. We ask that pettiness will be put aside, uh, uh, Republican and Democrat and Libertarian, Green Party, Independent, whatever it is, philosophies and arguments will be put aside so that American people will be helped and spared of the poverty that they're going through and also be lifted out of as much as uh, humanly possible here today. For those present uh, here under my sound of my voice, Lord, and virtually, we thank you for the homes that you have provided for us, the heat on this uh, freezing day, literally that can freeze at any moment, um, the food you've given us, the clothing, um, everything you've given us, Father. We can stand here all day and think about everything you've blessed us with, and it probably won't be enough time for all the blessing that you've given every last one of us. And we're thankful for that, but most of all for your son who died for our eternal salvation. Thank you, Father, not only for what was done on Calvary, but thank you for what's being done right now. What I mean by that is that uh, you never leave us, nor will you forsake us, and we thank you for that. Thank you for comforting us in all the times that we needed comfort, dear Father. Uh, Father God, we ask that, uh, again, that there'll be a smooth transition of power when it comes to um, inaugura Inauguration Day. Father God, we're praying for Nashville right now, Tennessee, dear Father, in which that was that bombing that is suspected to have been a suicide bombing. Father God, we in this country are dealing with a health situation crisis with coronavirus. Uh, we're dealing with rampant unemployment. We may be dealing with uh, homelessness on a scale we have never seen before. Uh, in January. Though our homelessness is chronic right now, it can just be a total disaster, dear Father, if assistance is not given to these families. Father God, our country is going through what we're calling uh, food anxiety, dear Father, or uh, meaning that so many people are not uh, sure where their next meal is going to come from, dear Father. And we ask that these things will be alleviated, eradicated, not just for the U.S., but for every nation across this, uh, this, this, this globe, but also, Lord, it's, and especially for those of the household of faith. Uh, dear precious Father, those names that were, were called earlier, we ask that you bless them to recover from the health issues that they're going through, their pains and suffering be taken away. We pray for their faith that it fails not, especially in these trying times that they're going through, not just from a societal standpoint in our country's woes, but also for their own personal households that they may go through in their own beds, meaning themselves personally, that they're suffering, that they rise from these beds of afflictions and most of all, keep their sight upon you as a source of help and strength and our hope in all things here and in the afterlife to come. 
Our dear precious Father, we bless, I ask that you bless those that are traveling that get to and from their destination safely. And all the bereaved families, those that were mentioned and those that we don't know about, uh, dear Father, that you bless them to have comfort and that they be able to keep on keeping on and have peace despite their loss. Dear Father, bless the rest of the service, Lord, that it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Lord. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. So we'll go ahead and we'll call the brothers up to complete the service. As always, please pray for us as we pray for you. Our sincere love and appreciation with all of you from my heart and my wife's heart, I'm sure, as well. God bless you and thanks again. If you need the Lord's Supper, please raise your hand. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you've been blessed by the Lord in a financial way, then certainly we ought to be uh, grateful and we ought to be willing to be a blessing to someone else. We ought to be uh, willing to give back to the Lord a portion. We ought to be willing to give back to the Lord a portion of our earnings as well. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul wrote, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come at this time to thank you for all the great things you've done for us. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, specifically for the financial blessings that you've blessed us with. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us to always be good stewards of our financial blessings. Help us to use our blessings wisely. Help us to be a blessing to someone else. And we pray that you would help us to have a a heart to be willing to give back to you in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable. And we just thank you for the offering that's been received this morning. Pray that uh, you would help us to use it in the wisest manner possible in the upbuilding of your kingdom. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. According to Acts chapter 20, verse number 7, the first century Christians came together upon the first day of the week to break bread. And since it, so we continue to follow the example of the first century Christians. The Apostle Paul wrote, and it is recorded in the first book of Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bow this time just acknowledging your greatness, realizing you're an awesome God, and we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the many blessings that you so richly showered upon us. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, this time for your Son, Jesus, who left heaven and came to earth and died in order that we might have eternal life and heavenly father we pray that as that thou would bless this bread that we're about to partake of which represents that son's body and we pray that as we partake of it we would do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you it's in your son jesus name we pray amen, amen. And after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till it come. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, 
shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many weak and many are sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we come again just thanking you for Jesus Christ and the great sacrifice that was made for us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll always keep in mind that great sacrifice and, and live a life that would be pleasing and acceptable unto you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that would bless this fruit of vine which represents that Son's shed blood. And we pray that as we partake of it, we will do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. It is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we want to thank all of we want to thank all of you for coming again this morning. We know that uh, the weather's a little cold this morning, but when the season changed and the weather changed, and we have to change. Amen. So uh, uh, we just ask that you continue to be with us, whether you're tuning in on Facebook or uh, here in the parking lot. We're just glad that you're here. Glad that you were able to hear the message this morning. It's always our pleasure to serve here, and we want you to know that. And at this time, we're going to have a closing hymn and benediction. Amen. Number 20, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see. All your goodness, grace, and power Stay beside me every hour Be my drink, be my living bread Keep me sheltered, keep me fed Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Dwell in me Before we had a benediction, we want to wish everybody a happy new year. We pray, uh, you know, blessings upon everybody as we enter into the year 2021. Uh, we especially just pray that the Lord allows us to see it. Uh, but uh, let us bow our heads for the benediction. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come today to say thank you once again for all of the many blessings that you have showered upon us we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning and uh, we pray that as we are worship you today that everything that we have done and said has been found pleasing and acceptable unto you um, that our worship is going up as a sweet sacrifice unto you lord we uh, just ask that you will be with all of us as we get ready to depart this place you know, for we know that many are going to their separate homes and Others are going to other destinations as well. And uh, we just ask that you will be with everybody, that you will protect us, uh, guide us, and keep us safe. Lord, we uh, ask that you will forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, for we know that there are many. Um, but we know that through your forgiveness, uh, that, that when we ask for forgiveness earnestly, that you will be willing and ready to forgive us. And Lord, we um, just ask a, a special blessing upon uh, the congregation here bless us as we go into 2021 and we pray that we'll go in with our heads strong and looking forward to being the best christians that we possibly can bringing glory to you through our deeds through our words and our actions lord we just ask that you will be with us protect us guide us keep us within the hall of your hand that's in your son jesus name we pray amen, amen. amen.